Hello, in this video we're going to talk about the quadratic equation uh, ax squared plus bx plus c and uh, a, b and c are the coefficients of the quadratic and for it to be an equation we have to actually let it equal something so it's uh, um, equal to zero and that's the standard form so when we say the coefficients there can be any number we like so let's make up a quadratic equation 2x squared uh, plus 3x minus 1 equals 0 okay and there's a well-known formula which is written in terms of the coefficients which uh, uh, I memorized when I was at school which is x equals minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a and I just remember it and then you can put the numbers in so x equals minus uh, well, let's see what's A, B, and C. A is 2, B is 3, and C is in minus 1. Don't forget the minus. So if we're putting these numbers in here, it would be minus whatever B is, which is 3 minus 3 plus or minus the square root of 3 squared minus 4 times A, which is 2 times c which is minus 1 so instead of putting minus 1 here we just make that into a plus all over 2a 2 times 2 so that would be minus 3 plus or minus the square root of 9 plus 8 all over 4 so that's going to be minus 3 plus or minus the square root of 17 all over 4. So there's two solutions which is minus 3 minus square root of 17 all over 4 or minus 3 plus square root of 17 all over 4. That's what the plus or minus equal uh, means. Okay and so that's just an example of solving one uh, quadratic equation and these are the coefficients and usually we use that formula but where does that formula come from well actually before I tell you about that let's see why has this equation got two solutions it, we're looking at uh, when it equal to zero so let's start with the simpler equation ax plus b equals zero okay now this is a linear equation because uh, uh, mx plus c um, and if we plot this uh, let's put it let's make some values like 2x plus uh, 1 equals 0 so um, when x equals 0 this is the x-axis and we're going to plot it so we're, and this is when x equals 0 when x equals 0 this is going to be 1 so it goes through the line there and it's got a gradient of 2 so it'll hit the the at a half here because it's going to go up like that and it's a straight line and this intersection here is where it hits this line and this line is the line when uh, y f of x is equal to zero so if we're plotting because what we're doing is we're plotting f of x against x and when we solve it for zero we want to know where does it cross the this line at the point zero and that's here so when it hits this line right but for a quadratic equation 
if we plot a quadratic equation it will either look like this or it will look like this and either way it's going to have uh, two solutions because it hits that line twice so that's why there's two solutions to a quadratic equation sometimes there might be no solutions no real solutions to a quadratic equation because it it might go like this so it's uh, above the whole time but it's basically either a U shape or an N shape right so to solve that linear equation ax plus b equals zero uh, we can that's very easy we just subtract the b so ax is equal to minus b and then we divide by a so x equals minus b over a yeah and that is the solution to this equation yeah so now what we're going to do is we're going to try and do the same thing but for the quadratic equation ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero okay and if we just naively do our usual algebra and try and just uh, uh, move things around let's let's see how far we go we take take away the c from both sides so we get ax squared plus bx is equal to minus c and then okay let's divide by a so we have uh, x squared plus b over a x is equal to minus c over a and then well it's not very easy to see how we can simplify it any further let's there's an x here and an x here so we could take those out and put them in a bracket so x times x plus b over a is equal to minus c over a but that doesn't get us really any closer to finding out what x is because there's an x here and an x here and what we really want is x equals some number uh, and of course the number in this case because it's algebra would be in relation to a b and c because these are always going to be numbers that we actually know uh, so in a real example it might be two three and one or something um, okay so we can't solve a quadratic equation where we solve a linear equation just by moving the, the um, equations around so instead we're going to take a step back and we're just going to look at well let's let's actually just say this if it if we didn't have this b term here we could solve it so a x squared plus c equals zero we can solve that because we subtract and we get a x squared is equal to minus c and then we get x squared is equal to minus c over a and then x would it be the plus or minus the square root of minus c over a now notice when we put an example numbers in here minus c over a uh, if this comes out as a um, positive number which it might do because maybe c is equal to minus one and a is equal to one then minus c over a would be minus 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 one over one which would just be one yeah so then x would be plus or minus the square root of one which would be plus or minus one um, but it also shows us that sometimes there might not be a solution because what if c is positive so c is two and a is two then this would be x equals plus or minus the square root of minus one and obviously there's no solution to that and it, and if we plotted that that curve we could see why there's no solution because it would look something like this 
where it never intersects this. And remember, when we're solving the equation for equal to zero, we're solving to see when it hits this line. It's the same thing. But it doesn't hit the line, so there's actually no real solutions. Now, uh, that led to a lot of debate and stuff in mathematics, and you had um, the invention of imaginary numbers. And an imaginary number, somebody somewhere decided, let's... Instead of dealing with this minus square root of minus 1, we don't know what it is. So we'll just call it i. So i is equal to square root of minus 1. And then you would be able to write the answer here as x equals plus or minus i. And you might wonder where that got you because it doesn't seem to help very much. But there's a whole set of numbers. When we're dealing with normal numbers, they, these are the real numbers. And when you deal with complex numbers, complex numbers uh, are a real number like a plus b i. That's the form they take. So they have uh, a real number plus. Uh, so this is the real part, and this is the imaginary part. Okay. So quadratic equations lead to some interesting things in mathematics. Right, here we're going to solve um, the quadratic equation. So um, we start by simplifying. So let's divide everything by a here. And we have uh, x squared plus b over a x plus c over a equals zero. So that we can just guarantee that uh, the um, coefficient of x squared is one. And these numbers are just going to be real numbers again. So in a way we've just uh, removed the coefficient of x, which is convenient. Um, and now uh, what we're going to do is we're going to step away from that for a second and we're going to consider the equation x plus e um, oh actually look what, let's say t x plus t squared let's multiply that out that's uh, x plus t x plus t that's going to be how many x terms x squared plus tx and there's tx that way so plus 2tx plus t squared yeah okay and now uh, let's look at this and compare it to this okay and let's see can we make this the same as this. Well, we we could set uh, b over a equal to two t. And if we did that, then we'd get a match for the x squared and the x term. Yeah. But we're not going to quite make it for the last term because we're not guaranteed then that c over a is going to equal to t squared. It probably isn't going to. Yeah? But we can force this to be the same as that. So let's put that in. And let's write x squared plus... Um, well, no, actually, what we'll do... Yeah, let, let's write x squared plus b over a x plus t squared. So that's another way of writing this x plus t all squared because we've made this to be true. Okay? Now... 
this t there's no t in this so let's find out what t is in terms of these so let's just rearrange this and we get t is equal to b over 2a yeah which means that t squared is equal to b squared over 4a squared so let's put that in so we have x squared plus b over a x plus b squared over 4a squared yeah and now and now I'm going to start the video again because I don't think it's gone very well